So welcome again. My name is Vic Rambatia. Uh, I'm the chief of staff here at Easing, uh, meaning I work directly with our senior leadership team on a number of our most strategic, uh, most important strategic issues. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm here uh, uh, working for Easing. Uh, Easing is a lowest cost, long duration energy storage technology. Uh, we've pioneered a uh, electrochemical cell, which is both scalable and flexible. Uh, when we think about long duration from our perspective, we actually view this in the uh, eight to 12 hour plus uh, duration range. Uh, specifically, our system is most economic actually in the range between 24 to 100 hours. So just getting into some an overview of the company. Um, so Ezink is based in Toronto, Canada. We were founded in, in 2013. Uh, currently, we're at about 68 full-time employees. That's actually grown uh, about double in the last six months or so. So we're growing rapidly right now. Uh, raised about $35 million US in private financing, and we're in the middle of raising a little bit more right now, and expect some news on that shortly. Uh, we've also been awarded uh, some non dilutive grant funding, and we have a robust patent family uh, coverage with, with seven patent families right now. Uh, but most importantly is this topic here at the bottom. Uh, we've actually had our first infield deployment. Uh, we had that in Q2 of this year. Uh, it is a uh, nameplate uh, one kilowatt uh, battery energy storage system, which is deployed at a compressed natural gas facility in Southern Ontario. So we'll happily show you a few pictures from that a little bit later on. Most importantly, we actually have two projects secure for 2023 and beyond. Uh, we are going to be deploying at a uh, wind farm in Texas with Toyota Shisho. Uh, that's going to be a nameplate 10 kilowatt battery energy storage system solution, as well as uh, we have a solicitation that we won with the California Energy Commission for a 10 kilowatt system at a commercial industrial application for backup power as well. Um, our our uh, executive team is, is robust and growing rapidly also uh, in the process of expanding that as we speak as well. So what is the challenge of long duration energy storage? Uh, as we've seen in the last uh, few years and we'll see in the coming decade, uh, new, there is rapid renewables growth uh, across the, uh, both the country as well as, as the world. However, when we think about the actual challenge here is that energy is, is, is independent, is, is undependable, it is intermittent. Um, and that, we see that over multiple days of time, especially when we're looking at solar and wind resources. It's not just the interday, it's the intraday as well. So for this, long duration energy storage is required to help buffer the activity and shift the peak from multiple days of lower of lower node generation into times of higher generation. So the solution that we've, that we've pioneered here is zinc as an energy carrier. Uh, so our technology is a cell that's about three feet by one foot by one foot in, 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 in dimension. Um, so what, what happens here is that the solution uh, that that's going to be that's going to be coming in is as energy comes into the top of this cell uh, via the, the graphite charge cathodes, it's actually stored in the middle of, of the cell in a liquid electrolyte, and that electrolyte holds dissolved zinc. When energy comes into the system, the zinc actually precipitates out, solidified as as metallized energy. Now this zinc sits at the bottom of the cell until it's required. We have an air cathode that exists at the bottom of the cell. Um, so energy is actually, sorry, air is actually going to be inputted into the cell um, to the load at, at, at that point. Um, the, the zinc is going to precipitate back into, or sorry, dissolve back into the electrolyte as a liquid. Um, and then that's going to release energy to the load itself. Uh, so this is a system which has been developed for the last 10 or so years, first at bench stop scale for the first six or eight years. And only recently have we actually been deployed this in the field in a real installation. So it's a very exciting milestone for the company and something that will buoy our commercialization strategy moving forward. So what are the advantages of this kind of system? First of all, the system is made from uh, very low, uh, sorry, very, very low, um, low cost, easily manufacturable uh, pieces, of, of, pieces of, of, of technology, meaning that we can scale independent energy capacity independently from power because the energy is actually stored within the electrolyte, the zinc itself, and not from the power delivery or power charging as we saw with the charge cathode and air cathode. Finally, the, the solution is actually flexible in itself as well. So we can actually increase the amount of, of electrolyte that exists in the cell without increasing power or, or storage. Um, and therefore we, we're, we're able to, to right size for the customer that we're, uh, that we're actually applying to. Um, so, at a, a smaller scale, where we can actually deploy this both in 
residential and commercial industrial applications for a kilowatt scale can go all the way up to grid utility level in the megawatt range. And we can do this by either A, making the size of the cell larger or smaller, depending on the application, or B, simply making more cells and putting out a larger system into the field. So there's other competitive advantages we have that are uh, related to the system as well. First of all, it's a long lifetime because we're storing energy in the zinc metal itself, um, which is contained within the cell. It actually retains 100% of its energy capacity over the lifetime of the cell itself. Um, it has a large operating temperature. Uh, we've been third-party validated to operate between minus 30 and positive 60 degrees Celsius. So whether you're deploying the system in Northern Ontario or in hot California or in the Middle East, for example, uh, the system should work under all these operating temperatures. The cell is also fire resistant, meaning you know because uh, everything is encased within a liquid electrolyte, uh, there is no risk of any kind of thermal runway here, uh, which is very important when considering alternatives. Uh, and finally, all of the cell's uh, materials are recyclable and reusable. Uh, and in fact, you can actually physically pick up the metallized zinc and electrolyte that exists within one cell transfer it to a different cell if you need to, and then reuse the energy capacity if so required. So Easing has been the uh, winner of, of uh, several recognitions and awards over the last several years. We were named to the 2022 Global Clean Tech 100. Uh, we've been featured in both Green Tech Media and BNN Bloomberg. Um, we won the Breakthrough Energy Solutions Canada Grand Prize winner uh, in, in 2018. Um, that's in, an offshoot of the Breakthrough Energy Solutions uh, or Breakthrough Energy Ventures program that exists in the U.S. Um, we were, as I mentioned before, we won a $1.3 million U.S. Uh, CVC award. Um, and earlier this year, we're named uh, Impact Canada Charging the Future winner uh, of, of, of a, uh, for, for a million dollar prize as well. Uh, our syndicate consists of a number of high value investors. Uh, so Energy Foundry was our seed round lead investor and a Series A majority investor. They're located in Chicago and bring a number, uh, sorry, uh, 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 several years of experience in, in, in energy and, and uh, the energy industry. Uh, BDC Canada is, is uh, Canada's largest venture bank. Anzu Partners is based out of San Diego and brings deep science and technology experience. Uh, but what we're most excited about actually is our uh, strategic investments from Toyota Ventures and, and any next. Uh, Toyota Ventures, of course, uh, you may know them from, from their automotive capabilities. Uh, and actually, our, our cell manufacturing process is very similar to that of a manufacturing assembly line. So we sought their help to help us both with supply chain as well as, as, well as manufacturing and help us deploy our long-term commercial pilots. Um, any Next, uh, you might know any as one of the world's uh, major, super major oil and gas companies. Uh, they're bringing a focus on R&D support as well as bringing in more partners for a commercial downstream uh, deployment as well. So thinking about the market opportunity that exists here, we look at the energy storage landscape overall. The power is always here on the left-hand side and the runtime on the bottom. At the, at the very beginning of the, of, of the runtime, you have very high uh, short kind of technologies such as flywheels and capacitors. Um, and then we see batteries and flow batteries such as lithium ion fit directly, uh, directly next to that. They're pretty good in that realm between four to 12 hours. Uh, but typically once you get beyond that for, for duration, uh, they're much more expensive to actually deploy at high power. Um, also, we have a higher, higher power infrastructure-based technologies, such as pumped hydro and compressed air, which are good for specific geographies, specific projects, um, best deployed, of course, at the source in front of the meter. Um, but for a behind-the-meter kind of solution where you need uh, variable amounts of power and long runtime, really no economical energy storage solution exists today. That's where easing is really having its, its initial target market. When we think about small or mid-scale, so less than 10, uh, 10 mil, uh, megawatt hours and longer duration of greater than 10 or really greater than 12 hours. Uh, and, and initially we're gonna be looking at the resilience and remote power market, which is often served by diesel generators today. So I'm gonna go a little bit more in depth into that. Uh, I just wanna make sure there aren't any questions in the meanwhile, uh, but I can't see the chat of course, so I'll have to wait a little bit for that. Oh, my apologies. Yeah, I would just keep focusing right now on the presentation and Vikram, then we can try and get to the Q&A afterwards, or you can do it during um, the chat. Excellent. Yeah, I was, I was trying to keep an eye on both of these uh, at, at the same time. This is a little bit challenging, though. So uh, I'm going to keep going here. So in the resilience and, and remote market, um, Easing's primary focus is going to be on, again, commercial customers in the diesel operates, uh, in, in diesel operate applications. 
Uh, business continuity is critical for these customers and using diesel is, is fairly painful for them. Uh, moreover, securing business in these industries would surely uh, would, would create long-term relationship that would ensure that future sales and, and could, could help these things scale more effectively. So we're actually going to have a phased go-to-market approach here. Um, in Horizon 1, which we're calling, is we're going to go into the resilience market, so backup power systems and non alternatives. In Horizon 2, uh, which, which we see as more like the, 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 the DER market, looking at off-grid residences and commercial industrial, remote communities, military bases, mining operations, et cetera. Horizon 3 is where we really see our largest market developing in you know, the, the five to eight year period. That's where we have that on-grid renewables balancing at, at large scale, which we need to uh, solve the challenge of intermittent renewable resource production. So going into a bit more detail now, Horizon 1, which is our resilience use case, um, what we're seeing here is we're going to have some energy benefits, so daily cycling to reduce costs. Um, but really, what we're going to have is increased resiliency, meaning we'll use 20% or 30% of your battery energy storage capacity uh, to help with the energy, energy benefits, time of use arbitrage, demand charge reduction, et cetera, during, during, during the day to day. But if there is uh, the, the opportunity for backup power to kick in for periods of, of lower than, than the normal grid resiliency, or lower than normal inner, uh, resource, renewable resource generation, that's where we see the majority of our use case really kicking into play here. So what we're seeing here is, a, is an example that we've, we've, we've come up with a commercial industrial customer in, in California. This is a customer that has on-site solar, um, and therefore they're charging their, their, their battery uh, with, with solar um, in the periods here that are, I'm not sure if you can see it, um, but the periods here that are uh, in, in, this, in this over here. So solar is going to be going directly to load in these light gray periods, uh, going uh, directly to uh, the actual, uh, sorry, solar is going to be going to, sorry, solar is going to be going to the load in these lighter gray periods here. Um, at, at, at times of higher generation, um, at, at, of higher load but lower generation is when we're going to use that storage on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and then uh, the grid is actually going to power that load in lower, in lower generation times in, in the middle here as well. But what we're actually seeing is that when we have a grid outage and there is no, no grid coming in, is when we actually have the most benefit and the state of charge of the battery, this black line here, is, is going down and down to serve the load um, and actually you know, fix those problems of having uh, no grid uh, power at all during those 48, 24 to 48 hour periods. So in our Horizon 2 application, we're looking at remote microgrids, and this is a bit of our, our value prop in that specific uh, scenario. So the current model that we're seeing right now is uh, diesel uh, buoyed with renewables and some sort of lithium ion battery. Um, this is a definitely an improvement over, over just a pure diesel application, and we're getting a 20 to 40% uh, uh, savings, savings uh, reduction there. Um, but there is going to be GHG emissions associated with those diesel generators. In a fully renewable model where you can go to a 100% renewable plus an easing system, um, our model actually shows that you can have a 40, 60% savings uh, versus 100% diesel and a, in a totally, totally clean system, which is a huge benefit. Finally, in Horizon 3, um, we've actually done multiple studies here and are, are referencing studies that are done by the LDES Council as well as McKinsey. Um, what we're seeing is that as a uh, percentage of annual, annual energy from renewables increases, um, about the, the 60% mark here is when you really need that, that capacity for um, 10 plus hours of storage duration to help fix those intermittent uh, generation issues. So areas where we're getting to 60% you know, plus in, in, in terms of overall renewable generation, such as, as California in, in you know, the near future, is when we really see the benefit of grid scale uh, megawatts long duration energy storage. So I'm going to talk a little bit about our own company history and our major milestones as well. So as I mentioned, the first uh, several years of our, of our development was in prototyping the system. Um, we moved quickly after that into a lab demonstration, and we were able to, to, to demonstrate this, the cell itself in a lab uh, in, in 2018. Um, over the last uh, couple of years, pre-pandemic, we're looking at again, our, our commercial prep in order to uh, get our system out in the field. We went through a number of different uh, fundraising rounds. We developed our first in-house air cathode uh, and, and brought in the majority of our, of our tech development team. Um, but the last couple of years is what we've really seen the most, uh, the most ramp up. 
Uh, we we actually piloted our, our or sorry sold our, sold our first pilot about a year ago, um, and we're able to over the last year bring in the automation, the software controls, the balance of system uh, uh, control system, etc., to really make the system as as a string operate. Uh, we had our first field deployment, as I mentioned, in June of 2022. So this system itself consists of both the power electronics, uh, an air system, software controls, creating a fully autonomous system that's able to be monitored remotely by our, by our team here in Toronto. Uh, again, it's a one kilowatt nameplate system that, that lasts for 24 hours of duration. Um, and it's, it's, it's actually two strings of, of 12 cells providing um, you know, total uh, you know, charging from solar going to loads at the compressed natural gas facility um, and then working directly with, uh, with the loads uh, that are there. Uh, now, moving forward from this, uh, 2022 and I guess 2023 as well, it's going to be about validating performance um, at a infield demo. Uh, so I mentioned our project with Toyota Shisho as well there. Uh, we're going to be raising a Series A2 a little bit later uh, this year and early next. Um, in 2023, 2024, we're going to finish the construction of our Canadian pilot scale manufacturing hub. We're moving into that facility in summer of next year, uh, demonstrating again that we can le have leadership in our Horizon One projects with uh, both Toyota and the, and the CEC. Um, and then moving forward from that, we're really going to develop our, our overall market leadership in both Horizon One or Two uh, and develop and validate uh, using proof of concept as a technology of choice for Horizon Three, move into longer scale duration systems uh, and expand our manufacturing uh, geographies to uh, sorry, improve our manufacturing technology, expand our manufacturing capabilities to new geographies and create our global footprint. Hey, Vikram, we've got a yeah. few minutes left. So what, can you just talk about exactly what eZinc is doing today and what organizations can do if they want to become part of a prototype, do a proof of concept with you? Yeah, so today uh, Easing is actually working on its its next project. We have all hands on deck in for, for our Toyota project, both the design of that system and then sales of actually further deployments of a similar proof of concept deployment. So, you know, we're actively looking for for customers who are you know looking for 2024 uh, deployments of a uh, of a, a of a of a pilot system. Um, so, if that's something that you're looking for, uh, please feel free to get in touch. My contact information is listed at the end of this presentation.